So off the top of my head, for all the countries we are currently working, for the legacy data site, uh, we will have documented more than 16,000 archaeological sites. And for the remote sensing site, we will have documented more than 30,000 archaeological sites. MIASAM itself is an acronym for Mapping Africa's Endangered Archaeological Site and Monuments. And the overall aim of the project is to document sites, information about sites, endangered archaeological sites in selected African countries using GIS and remote sensing techniques. Who funded this project and how long has it been running for? So uh, the project is being funded by Arcadia Trust and the first phase of the project was funded between 2020 and 2024 and the second uh, phase of the project started 2024 to 2029 so the project is going to run till 2029. So during the first phase we documented archaeological sites from legacy data from remote sensing and we were able to go to the field to branch through some of these sites. So in Tanzania where I worked uh, I was able to document about 4,000 legacy data sites and about 8,000 remote sensing sites. So there have been three field seasons. Um, this has been carried out, this uh, field work has been carried out by students of the Postgraduate Center of the University of Dar es Salaam, the Department of Heritage and Archaeological Studies. The purpose of the second phase is to extend the reach of the project to other countries and in all the countries where we, the project started to now finalize all the data because during the first phase of the project we are still trying to develop the resource model in terms of the site resource model, chronology resource model, so, or information resource model. So during the first phase we have been able to come to a conclusion about all the resource models that we are using, if information about all the sites, all the attributes have been concluded during the first phase. So the second phase has not seen addition of newer countries and now to like build on, on the achievement of the first phase in terms of now having the resource models for each of the sites that we are working. Why is it important to record these sites? Uh, most times um, in Africa, uh, sites are being destroyed on a daily basis because there are no really environmental impact assessment that are being carried out before uh, construction pro uh, uh, constructions are being done. So it's imperative that we have this kind of project because so many sites have been destroyed on a daily basis. So what the project is trying to do is to document and record these sites even before they are destroyed so that information about them can, can, be, can be saved and be openly available to people, researchers and museum practitioners and the general public. So what was your role on this project? So within the project I was uh, the postdoctoral research associate looking at uh, the country of Tanzania, which is the United Republic of Tanzania, consisting of the mainland Tanzania, and uh, the highland of Zanzibar and Pemba. What methods do you use on this project? So, uh, the MESA project uses uh, so many methods, particularly for us who are researchers on the project, we use a lot of uh, GIS uh, software because most of these sites that we're documenting, we document them from published articles, from theses, from maps, from field notes, so from all f from sources because that's one of the strengths of GIS. So GIS has the ability to, to extract information from several sources. So as researchers within the uh, MESA project, we are documenting sites from all these sources. So for me, I've looked at several uh, uh, published literatures, uh, unpublished literatures, maps, field notes, where people have gone to the field uh, to record information about sites. So we've documented all these sites from published and unpublished sources. What data do you collect? So we have two types of sites. We have our legacy data sites and we have remote sensing sites. So the legacy data sites are the sites that we have documented from published articles, from maps, from field notes. And we have sites that we have identified ourselves using remote sensing technologies. So basically we have been using Google Ad Pro for instance to identify those sites. And we have so many of algorithms that we have used to identify, predict the location of sites. After we have predicted the location of site, people go to the field to, to do some form of gradual thing to see whether this model. For Tanzania, for instance, I did a predictive modeling of archaeological site location in Mbeya. So what this model does is predict area of uh, high probability, medium probability, and low probability uh, the, um, based on um, based on finds or based on sites that, that have been located in Mbeya. So, so it guides archaeologists, it guides people to know where to go to, where the model has predicted area of higher probability. Like if you go there, there's higher probability that you're going to find sites. So it's one of the 
things that we've done within the project too. So I use predictive modeling using uh, MaxSet, which is maximum entropy. Some people use logistic regression, and some people use several algorithms to predict location of new sites. So on top of my head, for all the countries we are currently working, for the legacy data site, uh, we will have documented more than 16,000 archaeological sites, and for the remote sensing site, we will have documented more than 30,000 archaeological sites. What is the ultimate aim of the project? The ultimate aim of the project is to have an open access database, which is going to be an Arches database, where all information about this site that we have been working on for the past uh, eight years, after the end of the project, so all these sites are going to be freely available on Arches, and people will have access to them. So you will be able to see all these sites, information about them, regarding their chronology, the finds from the sites, uh, information about people who have worked there, and so that people no longer have to go there or go to Africa or go wherever to all these countries to look for this information is going to be freely available on an open access database called Archies. What was the biggest challenge of this project? In all the countries where we are currently working, we are working with uh, 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 government institutions in those countries because one of the uh, one of the aims of the of the project is to train people because after we have documented all these sites, we have to give them this database to all the local partners that we are currently working with. So one of the things that we are doing is to train these people on how to use the database, on how to document sites, and when we go to the field, how to record sites using the open data kits that we are using, and instead of using prospective form, which can we can get lost or get deleted on the field. So one of the biggest challenges I will say is that before people were able to buy the idea of the project, particularly the local partners, it took a while for some of the countries where we are currently working. And I think another challenge would be that, you know, because change in administration, because when you have been talking to some people within the government institutions, I mean, probably they resign or they leave the job, you have to start all right again with a new set of, like, people. So it's one of the challenges on the administrative part of the project. So on the other part of the project, for us who are working on documenting this site, one of the challenges we find is that sometimes you find some uh, sites that people have documented, but they are not correctly uh, recorded in terms of the uh, coordinates reference set that they have used to document the site. So when you plot these sites on, on probably Google Earth, you don't find these sites because people have recorded them using a separate coordinate reference system. So you have to look, you have to try to find the correct coordinate reference system before you can find the exact places where these sites are. And for some of these, you have to go to the field to run through because sometimes you plot some sites and you know definitely this site shouldn't is not here because you can't see anything on Google Earth. So what we need to do is to now go to the field to verify the location of the site. So you have to do a lot of uh, correction, particularly with regard to the geographic uh, location of sites. So I'll say that's one of the challenges, the biggest challenges that we are having. What was the common misconceptions about the Merson project? Well, uh, the common misconception that people have is particularly because we are working in several African countries with different uh, government establishment so people felt because after this after this project is uh, concluded this database has to be connected to a server which is going to be based currently based at the university of cambridge so most of the african countries where we are currently working they have the opinion that this server should be this server should be in their own countries not in cambridge but because we are working in eight different african countries and we're trying to put all these data together into a single database it has to be somewhere so we cannot pull, you pull all the data for eight African countries in a server in Tanzania because they would say they don't need the data for other countries where we are currently working, they just need it for themselves. So one of the ways through which we are trying to address this is that after this uh, pro uh, project, we are trying to develop a local database for all the countries. So we have like individual database in all the countries where we are working and we have a general database that is going to contain all the data from all the sites that we are working. So each country has their own local database that might still be linked to the general one and there's a general one with the server currently at the top of my head I think is going to be at the University of Cambridge. What do you think the greatest success has been or will be of this project? Well I think the greatest success of this of this uh, project will be at the end of the project when the Archive database is now live with all the sites in all the countries where we are currently working, available on them so that people can access their both legacy data and remote sensing data. So 
I would love the project to continue even after uh, the expiration of the funding, which is going to be in 2029. Uh, after we have trained all the local partners, and maybe when new sites have been found, there will be an avenue for them to keep updating this record so that new sites have been found are still being incorporated into the into the Archives database. So it's like a long term project. So it's not even when the project terminates at the end of 2029, the project will still run with the local partners in a way where they had new sites that they are because definitely new sites will still be will still be discovered as time goes on. So this new site will now be incorporated into the uh, database of the local partners who so would have trained them and given them um, uh, the expertise that they need to do this even after the project ends in 2029. And finally, if you had to go back, would you do anything differently? If I could do something differently now, I would say when I started the project, you know, some of the most of the resource models that we currently have, we have now uh, developed them, they are still in the pipeline, but now that we have a uh, the established source model so we now have information about site that you want to record so if i could go back to 2021 i would record more sites compared to what i recorded when when i started the project so if you want to follow the project uh the website of the project is www.miasam.org that's m-a-e-a-s-a-m.org and when you get to the uh, website you can see our various uh, social media and instagram twitter and facebook okay perfect